simulation and theory on quantum annealing in a thermal environment. This work is in collaboration with Hiroki Oshiyama and uh, Naokazu Shibata in Tohoku. Um, I, I start from the simplest quantum annealing. Um, let's consider about, uh, let's consider the 1D transverse fieldizing chain. Um, the Hamiltonian is given here. And the uh, transverse field is annealed from large value to the zero across a quantum phase transition. And the initial state is set at the ground state of uh, initial Hamiltonian where the transverse field is very strong. And the uh, state after the quantum annealing uh, contains a kink, which is shown here, red dashed lines. And uh, there is a domain structures in this uh, final state. The number of kinks, and, or the density of kinks, follows um, this scaling with respect to the quantum annealing, uh, speed of quantum annealing, um, which is um, given by tau. Uh, this is, tau is uh, um, the annealing time. This is called the uh, Kibble-Zurek scaling and very famous. Our question is that what happens in this scaling in the presence of an em thermal environment? Um, the environment is uh, very important because uh, any real system is coupled to an environment. This figure shows um, recent experiment Oops done by D-Wave machine, and uh, it shows the kink density as a function of annealing time. And the, for a short annealing time, uh, we can see, we can observe the Kibble-Zurek scaling shown by these green lines, and here, here. These two data, is for these two data are for uh, different strength of um, and coupling, couplings between spins. And for short time, we can, we can observe the result which is consistent with the closed system, but for longer annealing time, the kink density deviates from the um, scaling. So we want to focus on the behavior on this longer annealing times. And uh, the theoretical point of view, the open quantum systems are challenging because uh, tools for theoretical or numerical study are not well developed. Previous works have assumed a transverse coupling, which means the bath couples to the transverse field. In such a case, um, the model, which is a one-dimensional transverse guiding chain with bath, reduces to the free fermion model. So the problem is uh, easier to solve. But uh, longitudinal coupling is important in practice, because um, in D-waves machines, um, the coupling to the path is longitudinal. In that case, uh, free fermion representation is no longer available. And in addition, quantum, mas quantum master equation is limited to small systems. So uh, it is challenging to study a large systems. And in, in the, our work, we developed a new numerical method for long tunnel coupling with tensor network method. And the properties of our method is um, first non-partitive and non-Markovian. 
That is, um, we don't use born Markov approximation. Our method can be applied to the 1D transfer sizing model so far. And in the presence of, in the absence of disorder, we can study the infinite system. And uh, in the presence of disorder, we can study the systems with size up to, roughly speaking, 100. Using this, uh, we, we obtain the scaling of final energy, which, is, um, which corresponds to the Kibble-Zurich scaling in this case. Um, the one of the result is given here for the linear scheduling, which is given this Hamiltonian. And the final energy is given by the thermal average of the energy plus um, excess energy, which decays with the tau to the power of minus one third. Now, so we go, we move on to the model and method. We consider the quantumizing chain, a transfer sizing chain in one dimension coupled to a boson part. The system Hamiltonian is given here. Uh, this is just a one dimensional transfer sizing chain. And uh, this is a boson Hamiltonian, which is a collection of uh, harmonic oscillators. And this is the system and boson bath coupling. Um, the boson couples to the sigma z, that is the longitudinal field. The spectrum of uh, bath is ohmic, we assume, ohmic bath. And uh, this figure shows a cartoon, and each spin has each bath. So for this model, we use uh, path integral formalism, which is um, called as a quasi-adiapathic propagator path integral, in short, QAP. And uh, the time evolution, time evolution of the density operator is written using the time evolution operator U as this equation. We assume the initial state as the direct product of the ground state of spin Hamiltonian and uh, the thermal equilibrium of boson path. Then we apply the trotter decomposition to the, this density operator and trace out the boson degree of freedom. The resulting uh, reduced density matrix is uh, um, given here. And this is um, effectively the classical systems the coupled two, coupled two layer classical systems. Uh, this is the picture. And uh, time evolution corresponds to the tracing of um, spin degree of freedom from the discretized time step from zero to M minus one. M is a uh, total number. And in this picture, this um, horizontal axis stands for the space axis, and a vertical axis is time axis. Since we have um, two time evolution operators, here and oops, here, we have bilayered um, two-dimensional systems, classical systems. In addition, it is um, important that uh, we have long-ranged long interaction in time axis. So we have interaction from spin here and here. This figure shows the strength of long-range interaction in time direction. So this is a time. Uh, interaction, strength of interaction, and this is time. 
Um, real part is shown by blue line, and imaginary part is shown by orange lines. So this is a long range interaction. And in order, in order to simplify the numerical calculation, we introduce a cutoff for this long range, the range of um, interaction. So in, um, in practice, we set uh, the cutoff is uh, 10. Now, um, so this is the same figure shown before. And uh, we regard two spins at the same spatial position and spatial time as a single composite spin denoted by capital S. So this capital S has four degrees of freedom. Since uh, we have two spins for each one composite spin. So this figure can be um, transformed to this figure. Each um, black dot stands for a composite spin, and uh, a black line, solid line, shows the interaction space. And uh, this yellow, yellow line shows um, interaction along time direction. So this is a long range interaction. Since we have this long range interaction in time, and we cannot apply the trans transfer matrix method in, uh, developed in the statistical mechanics or uh, time evolution in one dimensional quantum system. So we apply a matrix product form for this long range interaction. So we denote um, this uh, interaction as by this symbol, A. A has um, M hands. A, A, A is a function of capital M of capital S. And this page shows, this, this slide shows the matrix of product operator of A. So we pick up one um, long range interaction. And we arrange this function as a product of matrices, like this equation. This can be uh, done and using a standard method of um, singular value decompositions. And uh, interestingly, the matrix dimension is increased, it, matrix dimension increases with increasing the time steps, but uh, one can, uh, I mean, one can restrict the size, the dimension of matrix by a uh, bond dimension D. And so that, uh, so that uh, the trunc uh, truncation error uh, is reduced. So this parameter D controls the accuracy of this method. So the, result, the resulting um, picture graph is given by this, type, this, this one. Once we, once we obtain this matrix product formalism, one can apply the methods such as ITBD, TBD, or TDMRG, which is developed for uh, time, time evolution in a 
1D called closed system, closed quantum system. The properties of our method we summarize here. We don't use Markovian approximation and Bolnak approximation. And uh, with this method, we can study the large systems. Uh, in, um, and indeed, uh, if we have the translation and invariance, we can study the infinite system. And uh, there is an entanglement in this method uh, between composite spins. Uh, the, it is not the entanglement between the uh, real spins, but uh, entanglement between composite spins. We use the parameters uh, in our computation. The width of total slice is 0 0.05. Uh, and cutoff of the interaction in time direction is 10, as, it, as I mentioned. And bone dimensions are 128 for time direction and spatial direction. Now, I explain the results. We assume the clean quantumizing chain without disorder with infinite sides. And we consider the, this scheduling of um, transverse field and the spin coupling. And we, we have um, this parameter alpha, which, is, uh, uh, which changes the nonlinearity of the transverse field. And we use the capital T for the temperature of the bath, bosom bath, and eta for a system bath coupling, and omega C for a cutoff frequency. Omega C is fixed at five throughout this work. First, I show the residual energy. The left figure shows the result for weak, weak coupling, where the coupling strength is 0 0.09, 0, 0, 0, 0.02. And uh, these data uh, show the different temperatures. For low temperatures, we see, uh, we observe the um, similar behavior as uh, the closed system. But uh, increasing the temperature, the residual energy deviates from the closed system equation, Kipper's Rex scale. So these um, um, non-monotonic behavior is called the anti kipper Zurek behavior, which is the um, increase, sorry, uh, increase, yes, increase with increasing the annealing time. And uh, residual energy eventually goes to the thermal value, which is the thermal expectation value of the energy. This uh, horizontal dashed line shows the um, thermal value, thermal average of the energy. So this line goes to the, this horizontal dashed line. And this one goes to this line. And this goes to eventually this line, I expect. The right figure shows the result for strong coupling. In this case, um, we, don't, we didn't observe the anti kiebel behavior uh, observed in the weak coupling situation. Uh, in this case, uh, the residual energy monotonically decreases with increasing the annealing time toward the thermal value. These results are consistent with the previous result obtained by Alcechi in 2018 for the transverse coupling. 
our result is uh, assumes the longitudinal couple. Here I show the um, instantaneous thermal equilibrium at t equal one. So this is the equilibrium as a function of rescaled time. So the vertical axis shows the energy passing. So this is equilibrium energy. And uh, these symbols shows the result of simulation using our method for uh, annealing time, 1,000, 1,000, and uh, strong coupling situation. And uh, the, the system initially is, initially the system is in the ground state of the spin Hamiltonian, which is not a thermal equilibrium. But uh, the system goes rapidly, uh, uh, relax, relaxes to the thermal equilibrium, and evolves quasi statically, quasi 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 statically, and near the near the end of annealing, the system deviates from the quasi static. Evolution. So here is the point, here is a time where the system um, deviates from the equilibrium. So the quasi static evolution breaks before the end. And uh, we analyze uh, the previous result using the freezing ansatz, uh, which uh, was proposed by Professor Amin. And we assume that quasi-static evolution breaks at a certain time, scale time S star, which is close to one. And the system is frozen there. Then the a reduced density matrix uh, after this time is star can be written as the density matrix at S star. This is the approximation, freezing approximation. Then we apply the perturbation expansion around S star near one. Then Hamiltonian is given, originally Hamiltonian, original Hamiltonian is given here, but uh, we neglect the second term because S star is close to one. So this is a small parameter and we neglect this. With this approximation, um, the reduced density matrix after the freezing time can be expressed by the is Ising Hamiltonian, the Gibbs state of Ising Hamiltonian. And the energy after freezing time can be um, approximated by the um, energy of Ising Hamiltonian multiplied by time. This is just a result of um, perturbation expansion, perturbation approximation, and uh, freezing approximation. So we apply this uh, theoretical result to understand the numerical results. So this dashed line shows the previous result I, I showed previously. And the energy after freezing time can be written by the um, energy of Ising Hamiltonian, thermal energy of Ising Hamiltonian multiplied by time. The numerical results follow this 
dash drive. This shows that freezing ansatz, freezing approximation works to explain the time evolution. Next, um, we develop a scaling theory regarding the freezing time, S star. So let uh, tau r denote the relaxation time of the system. This relaxation time diverges as the time uh, goes to one because the system Hamiltonian and a system bath coupling com uh, commute at s equal to one in our model. Okay, because uh, the system bath, bath coupling uh, includes sigma z, a longitudinal spin. And uh, the Hamiltonian at s equal one is given by Ising Hamiltonian only. I Ising Hamiltonian and the system bath coupling commutes. That's why the relaxation time diverges as s goes to one. In fact, uh, we can estimate the relaxation time from Fermi's golden rule as follows. Uh, relaxation time diverges as one, one minus s to the power minus two alpha. Alpha comes from this power, uh, transfer speed. And eta is a coupling strength between system and path. So the relaxation time diverges as uh, the time goes to one. And we consider the remaining time to the end, the end of the annealing, which is given by T A minus T. T A is the annealing time. And we assume that uh, the freezing of system happens when the relaxation time exceeds the remaining time, which is uh, often used uh, in the keeper zurek argument. Then we obtain the scaling of freezing time as this. So it is a one minus uh, some coefficient uh, and uh, eta ta to the power minus one divided by two alpha plus one. So this is the main reason. Then we apply this result to the final energy after quantum annealing. The final energy is given by the Hamiltonian in the Gibbs state of uh, temperature T uh, divided by the freezing time. And applying, applying the uh, perturbation expansion, this quantity can be expanded and in the first order of one minus, lowest order in the one minus s star. And this follows and this, this scaling using the previous result. Then we obtain the excess energy of the final state from the equilibrium energy, which, scale, which, scale, which is scaled as uh, eta ta to the power uh, minimum of two alpha and one divided by two alpha plus one. So this is the scaling of the excess energy of the final <coughs> state. For the linear situation where alpha is one, this excess energy is scaled as eta ta to the power minus one third. Here are the result of numerical simulation. Um, we fixed uh, the coupling, system bath coupling, um, 0 0.18, and T temperature is one. And uh, this axis is the excess energy per spin, and uh, horizontal axis, the annealing time. One can see that uh, the excess energy and uh, decays as a power of annealing time. 
And uh, these symbols are uh, for the different uh, power of the transverse field. And the right figure shows the uh, power of the decay of excess energy, this B, this B, as a function of alpha. The previous theory uh, predicts that uh, this power has this dependence on alpha. And this solid line shows the theoretical prediction, and the symbols are obtained by numerical simulation. Reed's results show that uh, the scaling theory is correct. Numerical results verify the scaling theory. Finally, um, we studied the eta dependence, the coupling strength depend dependence. Uh, this figure shows the excess energy uh, scaled by uh, annealing time and horizontal axis is uh, in path coupling. For the linear schedule case, uh, the theory predicts uh, for small eta uh, the excess energy scaled, uh, excess energy is scaled by this formula. And if we plot uh, the excess, excess energy multiplied by Ta to the power one third, uh, the excess energy should follow a single curve as a function of eta. Uh, this figure shows that for longer annealing time, the function of excess energy uh, collapse to a single curve. And this inset shows that uh, excess energy is scaled by eta Ta to the power one third. If the scaling is correct, uh, this quantity uh, follows a single curve. And again, we observe, we observe that uh, uh, results collapse to the single curve as increasing the uh, annealing time. So the numerical result is consistent with theoretical prediction. In addition, uh, we found that uh, there is a minimum of the excess energy as a function of eta. So this is, uh, this implies that uh, there is an optimal strength of system bath coupling to reduce the excess energy. This is not explained by the theory because the theory uh, assumes the um, perturbation, I mean the, the theory uses the perturbation expansion. So the theory doesn't predict the non-monotonic behavior of eta. Our numerical method can um, access to the uh, strong, uh, strong uh, coupling situation. So we can observe the existence of uh, optimal strength of system path coupling. So here is the conclusion of our work. Uh, we developed new numerical method, uh, which we call uh, non-Markov ITBD for longitudinal coupling. And uh, we observed using uh, nu this numerical method uh, that uh, uh, the residual energy uh, deviates from the Kibler-Zurek scaling. And uh, we obtained the scaling of the final energy. For linear schedule 
linear scheduling case, uh, the final, final energy follows this formula. And we found that the, the uh, optimal coupling, system bus coupling exists to reduce the final energy. This observation is beyond the theoretical prediction and shows the strength of our method. And if you are interested in our work, uh, please go to this paper. Thank you for your attention. For a very nice talk, uh, now time for questions. May I ask a question? Sure. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, it, it's a very impressive result. In particular, the agreement between the theory and the numerical experiment is impressive. And I wonder if you have compared your result with uh, experiment, real experiment on the quantum device. Yeah. Uh, you, you remember that we co-authored a paper in which yes. we measured the decay exponent of yes. uh, the energy, excess energy, which was close to one third. Yes. Is, does it suggest that your theory predicts that? Is it... um, in fact, I, we tried to explain the experiment, experimental results by, uh, in terms of our method, uh, in, by means of our method. But uh, uh, we failed that uh, exp we failed in the explanation of uh, quantitative explanation of experimental results. One, one reason is that uh, um, the schedule of quantum annealing is um, not linear. I mean, not linear, or nor is, it's not linear, and uh, it's different from this type of schedule. So we, 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 should, we should not have this result for a, a schedule of D wave. The scaling should be changes, the D wave machine. Uh, so you say that the uh, apparent closeness of the, the body one third to the experimental result is just a coincidence? I think so. But uh, oh, yeah, we, we, need to, <laughs> we need to see the result closely again. Yeah, I okay, will check. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, I want to ask two questions. So the first one is, uh, so what, what, what's the limit in uh, oh, this uh, method. 100 qubit limit uh, in the oh. when the chain is not like homogeneous, and yes. and this is related to like you have to apply a smaller trotter slice or something. Ah, and if the system has disorder, um, then the system doesn't have the transverse translational invariance. And then we don't, we, we, we cannot use the infinite size method. Um, the limitation of the system size comes from the entanglement. We have to, we have to use larger bone dimensions for larger system size. So that is a limitation and uh, Maybe. Oh, okay, so so yeah. uh, if we include uh, local fields on the qubits, uh, it, so, so your results just shows like, if we only have j's, uh, if we include local fields, it's still limited by the same number, is it? Sorry? Uh, if we include uh, like different h's on the qubits, mm -hmm. like longitudinal fields, uh, does the same limit apply, or you can? I think so. But uh, yeah, we can extend the system size um, beyond 100, but uh, I think 1,000 is uh, 
uh, impossible. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, and, and my second question is, uh, does this method apply to noise coupling to uh, arbitrary basis? So not just Z, but uh, maybe a combination of X and Z. X and Z. Uh, yeah, it's impossible. Uh, it's in principle possible. We can extend to our method to the transverse coupling in addition to the longitudinal coupling. Co coexistence of longitudinal and transverse coupling. But uh, again, the computational costs increases. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Thank you, N nice talk, very nice work. It is all for a one-dimensional icing chain, yes? Yes. So could you comment on what would change for high, higher spatial dimensions? Because, um, no, of course, for, for real annealing systems, we almost always have more connections between the qubits. So just to say what will change, what your method could still do and how the scaling might change, if you know. Um, so this method is for open system. And in the closed system, there is a few methods which can simulate the quantum dynamics in two dimensions, two dimensions. So two dimensional systems um, can be simulated um, with the method similar to this one. But uh, th that is challenging. The next uh, development is necessary. Hi, thanks for the nice talk. So could you go back to the last uh, plot that you showed, the one with the or maybe it's not the last one, the one with the minimum residual energy as a function of eta, yeah. Is the minimum always in the same eta for all the uh, annealing times? I, I cannot quite make out the, the smallest time curve. Oh. I mean, have you thought about this? Uh, the fact that you will have the minimum for the same uh, Coupling to the bath independent of the annealing uh -huh. time? Well, I, I have not checked that. <laughs> but uh, looking at this figure, it seems that uh, the position of minimum doesn't change uh, with. Uh, for different annealing times. But I, I haven't checked that. Okay, would you, well, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell if it's actually moving around. But okay, then thank you. Any other question? So does your uh, method suggest what an optimal, optimal annealing schedule should look like, what its time profile should be? Um, yes. Um, looking at this figure, um, the exponent has the largest at uh, alpha is 0.5. So if, we ha if one has the one half for alpha, uh, the, the decay rate of excess energy is the most, uh, the fastest. So that means um, uh, the transverse field is annealed as, a fa as one minus s to the power one half then the excess energy decays the fastest. 
Great, thank you. And then uh, using this method, not for solving dynamics, but just for finding the low energy states, is it the similar bond dimension uh, of like 128 just to find the, uh, you know, the just like uh, the, the low energy eigenstates of your of the Hamiltonian? Um. I guess I'm a little surprised that the bond dimension was so high, even for a 1D system. Uh -huh. Uh, so bond dimension is so high, uh, yes. You, I think, yes, this one, you say ds and dt is both 128. I was mm, yeah. a bit surprised. Yeah, in this case, uh, so we have um, entanglement between the composite spins and the entanglement along the uh, different times, uh, between different times. So the time direction, the interaction is long ranged. So we have, in some sense, strong entanglement in time direction. And in spatial di direction, uh, the, um, the entang since we have the entanglement between composite, composite spins, that's why we have, uh, I mean, some larger entanglement than the closed transverse icing chain. Okay, so it is, it is significantly larger than the closed transverse yes. icing chain. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Uh, I have one uh, question. Uh, so you showed that the baths were connected uh, individually to individual spins. Right. So, I mean, can we also like, extend this to say if the bath is connected to all spins together? Um, Um, the answer is I don't know. <laughs> we have to modify our method. Um, but uh, I don't know right now that it's possible for the situation where the all spins are coupled to a single bar. So let's thank the speaker once more. Thank you. Thank you.